You wish to see me, Your Majesty? It has been quiet of late, Pineleaf, but it brings me no comfort. Vithug Wintermind will come. He may arrive this very day, on the morrow, or perhaps months shall pass before at last he reveals himself. For that reason, I have spent many nights in wakefulness pondering the fate of Thikilgundu in the Grey Mountains. Is that the fate that shall befall Erebor? Will the folk of Dale and Erin Lasglen soon know all too well the cold that overtook us in the north? It does me no good to dwell on such thoughts, and indeed, there are more pressing matters this day. Dees, the keeper of Ravenhill and sister of Thorin Oakenshield, sent me an urgent summons requesting my presence at Ravenhill. It is a strange request, I think. There is no ill will between the ravens and Durin's folk, but we have grown distant since the days of Roach, the raven chief. His descendants are not known to me, and I do not think any of this realm have seen a raven of his stock in many years. I would ask that you accompany me to Ravenhill Pineleaf. If we have need to return swiftly to Erebor, we shall ride together. Very well. Let us then head over to Ravenhill. We have arrived. We have arrived, Pineleaf, for many long years, even by the reckoning of Durin's folk. Dees has been the keeper of Ravenhill. Had Feely and Keely not met with their tragic fate, I do not know if she would have come to tend the peoples of Roach. Such questions are best left unanswered, I think. These would not summon me without cause, and so I am curious to learn what matter could be so pressing, and perhaps of use to my kinfolk upon the eve of battle. Shall we enter Ravenhill, friend? Very well. Let us go. Come, Pineleaf. Let us learn for what purpose Dees has summoned us. I have come, Dees. Why have you summoned me to Ravenhill? Oh, there's a raven. Dees seems unusually wary of speaking in your presence, but gestures for you to approach. Yes? I did not expect to see you, Pineleaf. Am I to understand you have some business with the king under the mountain this day? Yes, I explain that Erebor will soon be under a siege of the great cold Drake Vithug, and that I have served as something of an ambassador to the king. These tidings are known to me. You may remain, but do not interrupt. This is a matter between the king under the mountain and the ravens of the north. Very well. And now I shall answer your question, King Under the Mountain. At long last, one of the line of Kroar and Roach has returned to Ravenhill. And now, you too have come. Dees reveals a wooden whistle. Very well. I would presume a raven will come down. Hail, King under the mountain! I am Arak, daughter of Kroar, chief of my people. I am Thorn Stonehelm, third of my name. Why now do you seek an audience with me? Thorin! Curious! It has been many years since I dwelt in the shadow of the mountain. When I was not long from my egg, Roach was chief. He knew friendship with your people. 
and he had not forgotten the kings of old. I have not forgotten them either. The last king of your name left Roach in anger, and he has honored the friendship between our peoples. Though it may not be remembered thus among the folk of Deerin, it is thus remembered to us. This is why I seek your audience. Shall you prove different, Thorin Stonehelm? I cannot answer for the hurts of my forebearer brought upon you. I knew only that your people lent us great aid in times of both peace and strife. Despite the unexpected tidings, you honor me with your summons. It seems I now seek your audience. An old foe of my people, a cold drake, shall soon come to Erebor. He was drawn hither by a man of unusual longevity named Karazgar. I fear my people may not endure them both, so I beg your aid. The keen eyes of your people may reveal secrets of great import. Then may decide the fate of Durin's folk. I would see the friendship between our people strengthen once more. If this you swear, I shall do as you bid. I shall honor the old ways of Thor and Kark. You will have the thanks of Durin's folk and all that your people desire. This oath I swear. Very well. Yet, I must know, who is your companion? Hmm. Wait. <laughs> For a bird, he has a pretty big quest ring. Now, who are you, Hobbit? I am Pine Leaf Needles. An interesting tale. It seems you have been an ally to many others before you came to serve the king under the mountain. Curious. If next I summon you, you would be wise to answer my call. All right. You have made a promise, king under the mountain. I trust you speak true. I have sent my people to spy upon your foes in the north. When they return, you will know as they know. I have spoken. Very well. These are good tidings, Pine Leaf. The ravens of the line of Rock, son of Kark, were of great wisdom. And I believe that Arak shall prove no different. Her ravens shall spy the hidden foes and dangers of the north. And if all goes as I hope, we will learn precisely when Vithug intends to come to Erebor. We shall know the truths beyond our sight and be the better prepared for it. I must honor the promise I have made to Arak, and so... I wish to return to Erebor. Let us go. So let us go back to Erebor. An interesting audience, Your Majesty. Patience will serve us well, Pineleaf. Arach possesses the wisdom of Roach. Of this I am certain. Her ravens are fewer in number, but their eyes remain keen in the matters of spying. With their aid, 
we might sooner learn the truth of the visions you were granted. Why has Vithug not yet come to Erebor? What does Karasgar seek in Dol Guldor? And how has he traveled so many miles in such a short time? We have sent the ravens forth, and we must now wait upon the tidings of their return. And what will they bring? Perhaps we'll find that out in the next episode of The Lay of Rust and Rhyme.